What's up everybody, it's Sal the Investor here, back at it again on a Friday evening. Meant to do this market watch video a little earlier, but hey, I do run a moving company and a cleaning company, so things are pretty busy on a Saturday for us. Anyway, so with that said, I kind of, towards the end of the week, we'll do a market count up. I wanted to really release this Friday, but it's Saturday, so here we are. Anyway, there's been a lot of craziness, a lot of airdrops. If you were in Linkto, or I'm so, I cannot pronounce the names for crap, but if you're in Linkto, L I N Q T O, an accredited investor, and you had invested into Ripple, you would have been airdropped a thousand dollars with the XRP. It, if you're also a wallet holder of Uphold, you're getting airdrop something today. There's also a lot of other cool things. I did see on the DeFi staking that I am making a little bit more on there. Although I wish crypto DeFi wallet could be accessed on a computer. Unless if I don't know how yet. Just never really looked into it. But I am getting over 16% now on Atom which last month I was getting 15%, so I'm kind of happy about that. And I probably will be increasing my holdings in there. I also made a quick purchase of DOT yesterday, only about making it 5% of my portfolio. And, of course, it's now staking for everyone, I believe, so I'm going to get that started right away. I'm all about, with crypto, about staking and doing a lot of craziness. Uh, let's take a look at XRP right here. You know, it's it's been holding steady at this dot at a point eighty two for a while. It's been going up, going down, going up, but it's been staying here. So this might just be the new support level that everybody's been talking about. But I know watching some videos are saying we're looking at two fifty this year, two hundred, and I want to say realistically. You're not going to see anything on an XRP probably until that case with the SEC is settled. And that's probably not going to happen until the end of this year or maybe in the beginning of next year. But what that means is while it's at this nice price here, which is basically getting a a token and a half, a token and a fifth of a token for every dollar you spend, you could still get that get a pretty good bag on this here. Now there's a lot of a lot of interesting things going on with this. Of course, on my portfolio, I'm investing in Bank of America due to their partnership with Ripple and XRP and how they will utilize it on their foreign exchange platforms and uh, trading platforms, which I don't think people understand how useful this is because with the value with the the exchange process and making this transaction instantaneous, I was a former broker and. You know, it's it's a little it's a little tough to uh, get those trades in. Sometimes I was kind of at the tail end of switching over to fully automated. So even though trades were done on the consumer side through the computer, it would still go to a broker, which then went to a clerk, which then went to the floor, which then went back to the clerk and then back to the broker. Which it still kind of does now, but what this platform is going to do is it's going to expedite that so i can see this being crazy good from an investment side because it means you can transact instantaneous and cash out at the at the proper earnings that you want also uh, from a business owner side this will make transactions instantaneous if you don't own a small business i could tell you right away that a lot of car companies especially bigger 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 as you grow and you get bigger, bigger sales or purchases, or you're doing bigger contracts if you're a construction or a mover or anything else like that, that I can tell you right now, banks play big brother to you. I my first first big client was like fifty six thousand dollars on the move. My first big client, and her deposit check was held for twenty one business days because they could. So with this. Probably won't have to go through that. But as an investor side, as a broker, as you know, I'm not a licensed financial advisor. I am a broker, so I don't care. I only just sell. Sell and buy. That's all I do. 
and I encourage you to always seek financial advice from a financial planner and see what best fits for you. For me, I'm not looking at, at this for the long term. I'm looking at this for the year. As you see here, it, it's been on a steady down. This is right when I actually had someone tell me about it. Went back up, kind of dipped down, kind of dipped down here. And then this is where I get. I got in this year around here. And a little bit like right here, right here, right here somewhere. Because there's some that were in the 70, 70 range, 70 cents range. And i just been holding ever since. So now it looks kind of like, okay, this is going to zero. But if we go all, you can see really the impact of that lawsuit has just been killing the damn thing. However... Once it's resolved, which I which I believe it will resolve favorably in it in Ripple's favor and favorably for all of us holding it, I think we're gonna we're gonna see a great return. If you if you bought a fit in the fifty cent range, you're probably gonna see a five x. Two fifty is the highest I could see it getting to this year if the court case gets resolved in July if not you're probably looking at a little later but if you're looking for 200 300 dollars you're probably going to have to wait till they burn a lot of the excess tokens and you're going to have to wait till the more of the market sees the true value of this but you got over 400 banks partnering with it it's it's bumping heads with Swift. It's doing a lot of great things, and I think it's going to start coming. But if you're looking for this to invest today and make a million tomorrow, you're going to die holding your breath. That's that's all I got to say. You, this is something you put away, you lock it up in your in your wallet, and you just let it go. Dot. I decided to get into. I got into it in a range between here and like. Like up here, like I was buying in this range. I was not buying in this range. I decided here. That's when I decided. I watched an old video that if you want to go to the Polka Dot YouTube channel, they have an actual channel. I watched one of their updates that were maybe a few months ago. So I said, today is a good day to buy. But since it's 5%, not really risking as much. So I'm perfectly safe with it. Over, the, let's take a look over the year. We're kind of down here, so, you know, we can get back to this territory. It's probably going to get back there, probably to the end of the year or maybe earlier. You know, this is a season where a lot more people are going to get involved in investing in crypto. But overall, I like the strategy. I like the white paper on it. I like where it's going. I had a friend of mine re keep recommending this. He holds quite a bit. It's about... I think he says about 12% of his portfolio. I researched it. He's been yank he's been yakking it off to me for uh about this freaking coin like he's like almost in love with this damn thing, but this sucker does have some utility, but it's slow. Don't expect anything from it. It might stay around here 20 to 30 range for a while. But I'm not expecting to make a lot of money hyper quickly i'm looking i'm looking for long term two three years out making some money on this solana i'm still watching this although if you look at it from a year point it's headed back up so you're just going to get another mountain over here pretty soon as this one is the most it has the potential to really do something but it's also the most hyped among people if you if you're hating Ethereum, you're probably liking this. And that's okay. Everyone's got their opinion. However, what I don't like is, is that it has locked up liquidity, crashed a few times, and can't really risk a lot. However, I could say, okay, let's let's put a thousand or let's put ten tokens worth of value into this. That would be a, a decent chunk of my portfolio right now, since I'm not really risking a lot. I'm only putting in what I would normally put in at about a sixty thousand dollar annual salary which you could put in every week or every two weeks on a pay period so that's how i curb my excitement too like i don't get too involved in this too involved in this but i'm watching this i'm watching this i 
I mean, this is going to be the first time I'm going to look at this with the white paper with you together. So, already, you know what I guys like? I like the names. I like the names right up front. I like to be able to contact you. I know who to yell at if you steal my money. All right. I like that. Up front, visibility. I like that. Intro, blockchain, blah, blah, blah. We'll take a quick look at this. All the service of the things my understanding is I'm looking for what are they going to do about handling the crash so but as you see trying to make this a cheaper process and everything proof of history easier on the energy constraints let's see here we're just going kind of going through a brief rundown of it maybe one day I'll take do a video of actually reading the white paper with everybody and explain maybe not on some crypto but maybe on a on a st on a company on the stock market so all this nice stuff I'm actually taking a brief look at it oh man didn't even look over here got lots to look through okay we ain't gonna do this today but we will make out this is an entire video on its own but this is what I like all this information all this information look at this freaking information love it this this right here most likely not a scammer now just just because something fails doesn't mean it's a scam it could fail just because the idea just didn't transcend to consumer sentiment or just didn't work the way that the founders intended it to but they're going to save solana for another day you are still on my watch list still on there still on there all right so let's go to the main point of this video here and now why the reason why I have this in my portfolio and we're looking at close as you can see I buy with maximum thing I have no money to buy no money no money to buy nothing here don't buy anything I'm broke so but looking at this now the reason why I picked this company this is a real estate company they do a lot of great things such as home development uh, rental properties things like that and also large-scale real estate projects and all that fun stuff right there so as you can see here if we look at the five-year trend it's going down but that's not what we're investing in this thing it's obviously going down due to now well, here's right at the beginning of the pandemic and it's slowly creeping up but going down because mostly people forget about this now what I like about this is that they've been around since 1996 so anyone that has founded this company obviously has worked through 1987 crash the early 90s real estate crash and this came about right after so they capitalized on a lot of probably a lot of great deals at a rock bottom prices there and once again they survived the 2008 crash where everybody lost their shirt and their pants and that you know you're looking at a 10 billion mark 10.31 billion market cap price per earnings so they're earning four 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 dollars 42 cents per share you're looking at you know here's your high here's your 52 week high 52 week low it's kind of hovering right around the low area decent chunk of volume now with this something now if you look at this dividend yield 1246 right 1246 so you're not really looking to you're looking for this right here you're not really looking to uh, trade this stock you're wanting this company to run well so you can get this high dividend this dividend is twelve dollars and forty six cents per share per year so if you're taking a look at that, if you just put in $100 shares at $700, and you're looking at 12, let me look, sorry, let me do this on my calculator here. Okay, so if you're looking to do, if you're if you got 700 shares times 12, what what did I say this was? Oops, let's let's make this a little smaller. Yink. Let's do that right here. Okay, so you're saying twelve dollars and forty six cents. So oops, I don't know why I did that. Okay, let's clear. So you're looking at seven hundred shares. 
So that's probably going to be about seven seven thousand dollars. So was that times seven point seven equals that? So yeah, it's about five fifty three ninety divided by seven point seven. Anyway, so 700 shares times 12.46. Man, I have some butterfingers today. Anyway, well, well, close enough, right? So you're going to divide that by 4. So you're looking at every three months getting paid this off of a $5,000 investment. And you're looking to make 8000 per year. Now, the risk involved in this is right now, in my opinion, I think the real estate market is going to take a crash. So we're going to hold off on buying more of this until we wait until that period. Of course, if it drops a dollar, look, we already made our money back from holding it for a year. So let's just uh, get rid of it, right? Get rid of it if it goes down to a dollar. So if we, if we go back down to $6, We'll get rid of it. But if we're holding steady at seven now, keep in mind I bought this at around right around here. So we're looking at eight, nine dollars. So I've already lost money off the value of it, but I've gained money off of my portfolio. So I kind of broke even off of this, off of having it there with dividends. So with that said, I'll still keep it around. Things seem to stay positive and profitable. You know, here's what they describe. The commercial real estate group includes commercial mortgage, loan securities, and other commercial real estate debt and equity investments. So when they say that is they're usually partners in, like if you've seen a lot of these big uh, development projects or big apartment community projects, that's what they're investing in. Now, with that said, there's oh, people, people got to say what they got to say about it, about what's going on in the market right now. My personal belief is, is that the way everything's going with people dating less, people not having relationships, people not having families, the apartment communities and developments are going to be booming. And this right here, if it can make it through this crash, this incoming crash in the real estate market, I, there's a lot of people say, no, 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 it's not going to happen. I have a gut feeling and I got big gut. So when I know when my gut starts saying it's going to drop, it's going to drop. And usually it happens at some point. But I have a feeling right now because homes are too unaffordable, you know, in my in my area, there's a lot of neighborhoods that are just empty that were bought by investors and not just institutional investors, but people buying properties that are just holding it as an investment and not even renting it out. There's entire empty neighborhoods. So, oh, excuse me. So. With that being said, I have a feeling there's going to be a crash. Now, what this crash means is, for these guys, opportunity, if they're not over leveraged. They're not as over leveraged as I think they are. I think they're in a great position because I think what's going to happen is it's going to collapse. They're going to suck up some value. And I think they're also going to get into mall restructure, like the, the malls that are empty. I think they're going to probably get in that market too, make some money there, grab some investments there and grow. But I wouldn't see this stock really move in the next until the next five or six years, maybe even 10 years. This is something that if you bought it now in 10 years, you're probably going to say, thank you, younger self, because it will probably be around $30, $40. I think is a good value, especially if you're giving a nine, a $12 dividend, $12 dividend. So with that being said, with that being said, is just I would just stay, keep this on your watch list, keep it focused. I am not buying. I rate it as a hold, hold, hold this. If it goes to six, I'm selling. I'm not saying you should. I would definitely consult with uh, your investment advisor or your uh, financial planner. If you, want, if you have a portfolio and you want to add it in there, talk to your planner. Sometimes, hey, getting, getting different minds on a project will help see some clarity. But for me, I have it in my dividend portfolio. I don't have a lot because it's, to me, it's still kind of a high risk right now with the crash rates that could happen in 
both in both banking and the real estate market. And if one or the other collapses, usually the other one's gonna go down too. And I don't mean collapse like disappear, but it's gonna crash and it'll build itself back up and it'll crash again and go back up, crash again, go back up. There's just there's just a cycle of resets. That's all it is. And people who are vastly over leveraged will go right back to where they were before. So or hopefully they you know they just declare bankruptcy and walk away and have him go back to uh getting a job, I guess. I don't know. But for us here. We're going to look at it. If you're trying to build a dividend portfolio, this is one of the ones I have. And I have this one. I have Apple. I have Coke products. I have Coke. And I have, uh, what's the, oh my God, Bank of America. Now, Bank of America pays minimal dividends. Coke kind of, it's okay. But there are companies that I feel are just going to be around. I don't think Bank of America is disappearing and but it could, but Coca-Cola is not going anywhere. You got a bunch of us fat Americans addicted to that crap. So all their products, they'll be around forever and they'll always make money. Now with this one, I, it, it's enough to pay a, a mortgage payment every three months. It's enough to do what I would do. If you have a low, if you only got like if you only feel like putting in a little bit of money, re reinvest the dividends. Just keep reinvesting it. Because if you're going to build a dividend portfolio, you got to get it up to $2.5 million to even make something. And it's got to be able to just be there consistently. And it has to be something that gives you enough money that you don't have to tap into. And that a lot goes into retirement planning, which I recommend you go get a financial planner. Because you should have, not only should you be investing in Vanguard, doing a little bit yourself, but you should have a dividend portfolio set up so that way it can be giving you some passive income. And keep in mind, this isn't something that you're going to make in two years or one year. This is something you're going to make over a lifetime. This is the slow, steady, not so sexy buildup to build your leisure when you're 60 plus. And look, the goal is we want to retire at 45, 50. That's the goal. We're going to keep that in mind. Now, also keep in mind, I own two companies. So I control my ability to invest in a different level. Now, with that said, I also, I'm not a firm believer of pulling massive amounts of money out of my companies. You know, you should always put that stuff back into the business. Definitely right now. It should be save, 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 save. So that way your business can pay payroll if, you, God forbid, you have zero customers or clients for an extended period of time. And that is something I do recommend that you do. If you have a business and you're making a lot of money, if let's just say you make $100,000 in profit, pure profit, you look at yourself, I can live off 1000 pay myself 1000 Put the rest in the in the bank there. Just let it sit there and let it say, okay, I got people's payroll. Because when you own a business, you are you are responsible for people's pay and livelihood. And if you can't pay it, you're going to become one hell of an asshole and a motherfucker to those people. So, and that's just how it is. But it is tough. It's tough. Especially if you're in your first couple years. It, it, don't expect any money from a business until like year five, year six, maybe even year 10, depending on what industry you're in. But if if you're working a nine to five, I would definitely say start putting some money aside. If you want to strike into this, get some good yearly dividends off of it. It's a good buy. But right now, I'd say it's a hold. But if it drops to like 650 and you see it's a lot of sell pressure, it's a good time to buy. And right now, I think a lot of things are a good time to buy because everyone has a fear of missing out. You got a lot of young people wanting to make so much money into it. You know, it's it's just a crazy time right now. People think not working equals freedom, financial freedom. And really, I can tell you right now, running a business is not financial freedom. Not yet, anyway. It will be. When you get successful to after 10 years, but in the beginning, it every customer is your boss. If you own a business, every customer is your boss. Every employee is your boss, kind of. It, it's just crazy. It's just crazy. Anyway, with that said, thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. Remember, 
Always respect the process. Always do your research. Always, always do your research. Never invest in something that you are not comfortable with. Even if it turns out to be a good, great win and you missed out, hey, it's better to miss out than to lose out. Always remember that. Better to miss out than to lose out. With that said, like and subscribe. Let's help me get to 1,000 subscribers. Really appreciate it. That's my goal. But my major goal is just get this information out there. And hopefully my next video will be a little bit on me doing some trading and kind of doing some research. I know I will do one on Solana as I read about this and go through all this. And if you're liking what you see, go to my Patreon. I'm going to post why I put why I invested in Polkadot on there. And that's not going to be on YouTube, at least not for a week. But now just take it in. The market's been crazy. It's been pretty flat this this week. Let's take on that last look update. Yeah, we're going we're at 2.116 trillion. It's kind of hovering there, but I like this number. I think more big institutions are getting into it. So let me know next time. Like and subscribe. I rant. I talk a lot. I'm just a board broker. So I apologize. Check you guys later.